Welcome and congratulations on your new Timney Trigger. My name is Alex. I'm here to help guide you through the installation of the Ultimate Builder's Kit for Glock Gen 3 and 4, as well as give a few tech tips where needed to make the installation process seamless. Without further ado, let's get into it. Here are the components that are provided in the Ultimate Builder's Kit, also known as the UBK. It will come with a striker, striker spring, a connector, safety plunger, safety plunger spring, the sear trigger bar assembly, and two return springs. The silver return spring is going to give you the lightest pull weight. The red return spring, it will be a little bit heavier pull weight, however it will give you a more positive reset and the sea washer to help install the sear. To start, we're going to remove the slide, make sure that the firearm is empty. No magazine, chamber is empty. Go ahead and release the slide, pull the trigger, and then remove the slide completely from the frame. With the frame, we can go ahead and remove the pins to remove the factory assembly. Going to start with the top pin closest to the trigger. Push that out. You can use a small punch. On this bottom one that secures the trigger, you want to make sure that the slide release clears it so that way when you're pushing, putting pressure on it, it'll line up and push right through. You do not want to hammer this pin out. For the back one, should also just slide out. Remove your locking block and factory trigger assembly. To install the sear, we're going to first remove the trigger assembly and return spring. Once rotated back, you can kind of come off of the trigger housing. Set that aside. Now with the sear, we want to back off this button head screw just a little bit, about halfway, to then insert it. You want to push down on this, make sure it's a little bit below flush, and this will give a little space underneath for the C washer to be installed in between. Once you have the C washer in, take the provided Allen key and tighten that down, securing it. Applying a little pressure from the top as it's tightened down. Makes for a good solid fit. With the sear housing secured into the trigger housing, we can go ahead and push the factory connector out. Starting on this left hand side, there's a little Hole. You can use the provided flag wrench or a punch to go ahead and push out the factory connector. And now you want to reinsert the Timney connector the same way that the factory connector pushed out. Line it up on the bottom and just push on the bottom to seat that all the way in. With the trigger housing all buttoned up, we can go ahead and move over to the trigger bar. This will have the captured return spring. We're going to use the red return spring on this one, like the positive reset on it. Go ahead and insert it into the small hole here and rotate it up and it holds it in place. Then these can be matched up as a set to be installed into the frame. With your locking block, you want to make sure that this leg of the return spring is facing back toward the magazine well when the trigger block is mounted. You want it behind it. And push that down. I like to start with this top pin. Go ahead and insert it from right to left. 
and it will make contact with the spring. So you're going to have to push that in and it allows the pin to slide all the way through. With your top pin in, we can go ahead and insert the trigger mounting pin. Make sure that the trigger lines up through this hole. Slide it in easy. Shouldn't be interfering with anything at the time. When you go and push it, you want to bring it back out about halfway to allow clearance for your slide lock to be inserted on the left hand side of the trigger. Once that is aligned in the hole, go ahead and apply a little pressure to the pin. Move it around if you have to, and it'll slide into place. With the front trigger pin, you want to make sure that it is centered and not pressing against the slide lock, making sure that that moves freely. We can insert the rear pin that holds the trigger housing in place. Slide that in and secure it. And that's it for the frame before we move on to the slide for the UBK. Before adding the slide to the frame, we're going to go ahead and add the striker, striker spring, safety plunger, and safety plunger spring. We're going to go ahead and remove the recoil spring and barrel from the slide. Now with a flat screwdriver, punch, or equivalent, we're going to push this sleeve closer toward the barrel side and remove this end cap. With the end cap removed, let's slide this off, cover that so that way you don't lose any springs, and this will allow access to remove your striker. To remove the components from the striker, we're going to pull this out, flip it upside down, so that way the striker actually holds on, on the slide here. We're going to pull this spring down, making sure we do not lose these cups that secure it onto the striker. These are going to be used on the Timney striker and spring. Once that's removed, relieve tension, pull this out, and the factory components can be pulled apart. Now we won't be using these. You want to use your cup with a fact with a Timney striker, striker spring, and we can install this the same way using the back of the slide, holding that to secure everything in place, pulling this down to reinsert the cups. With this together, we can set that off to the side for later use. We can now go ahead and in uninstall the factory safety plunger, removing this plunger. You want to push down on the safety plunger and it will release your extractor here. And that allows the safety plunger to come out of the slide. To reinstall the Timney safety plunger, we want to make sure that that hole is actually clean and free of debris, so that way it doesn't get stuck or feel any, any kind of grime. Go ahead and put the spring in the bottom, inserted like this, and that can be inserted into the slide. If the spring comes out, just realign it through the hole here and your extractor can be reinserted securing the safety plunger and put your plunger back in. With the safety plunger and extractor plunger assembly installed we can insert the new firing pin want to make sure that the sleeve lines up here. When putting on the end plate, going to start it and then 
push the striker sleeve down using either a punch or a flathead screwdriver. You like to use the end of a punch here just to give you clearance, get that started. And then your extractor plunger next. Once cleared, it pushes all the way on. We'll finish reassembling the slide, putting your barrel back in. Guide rod and return spring here. Now with your frame, we want to go ahead and before finally installing the slide to the frame, double check, connector is functioning properly, popping up on the sear once it's released and moves forward. Now we can insert the slide and do a final safety check. And that's it. We hope this helped you with the installation process of the Ultimate Builders Kit for the Glock Gen 3 and 4. If you have any remaining questions, our world-class customer service agents are more than happy to help. Just give us a call, 623-223-1111, or head over to our website and click the yellow Contact Us button on the right-hand side. If not, congratulations on installing your Timney trigger. You can now go shoot with ease, knowing you've got the world's finest trigger in your hands.